And hello, everybody, and welcome to Top Draw. It is episode 19. We are looking at our part three for Battle for Gia. But first, holy crap, it's a Saturday. However, it's not really a Saturday, but it is a Saturday. We're pretending it's a Saturday because that's how we do things here. Because it's all about time travel when it comes to Top Draw. It's not just TCGs, SCGs, and CCGs. It's about traveling and through time. And speaking of traveling through time, we have the ability to summon through the use of many, many sacrifices, the one, the only, Dr. Marshmallows. Hi. Greetings, mortals. Um, Yes, at some point we'll have to have, like, Dr. Brian Cox on the show, or, like, Stephen Hawking to explain how we do these things. But, but yes, time and space has been shattered, and we're here on a, on a Wednesday or a Tuesday, going out <laughs> on Saturday, doing, doing stuff. You don't even know what day we record anymore. I really don't. <sighs> I don't either. However, it actually works out in our favor because one of the nifty things about us doing a pre-record is the fact that we are able to bring you some extra stuff in advance, which we've got all throughout today's show. Yes. So, do you want to start off so much? All right. Uh, so, so the the astute watchers um, here will notice that we didn't do a show last week. Sorry, sorry about that. Super that technical difficulties. Yeah. Chu Chu has invaded the Mobile Studios, and I sat back and I laughed and laughed. Um, but yeah, bad stuff happened. Um, it's all right. They were thrown in the sacrifice chamber. Um, that's how he summoned me today. It all worked out for the best. <laughs> Sure, that's the story yeah. we're going to stick with, and that's what we're going to go with. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like it. Um, all right, so into actual content today. Uh, so last week, well, not last week, but the week before, last last time you saw the MMO buff all this, all this time travel and time mixing up, I'm surprised we literally have not, like, started a black hole in, like, the middle of the internet. Yeah. You know? All right. So the last time you saw us, uh, we were talking about barriers to entry and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it, it's our harshest show by far. We Every show, every it makes a difference what game we review. That is going to be the most critical out of like... Yeah, yeah we're going to have developers like weeping in the corner, crying um, on, on, some of, on some of our shows, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, that, that's the most brutal thing, but it sets up... The stuff we talk about after. So, it, it, if you're a, if you're a temperamental or a very empathic person, you probably shouldn't watch the last episode. <laughs> um, but on, on that topic, we do have a couple of clarifications to make. Yes. Um, yes. I I, I want to throw this out there because I don't think a lot of people realize when we do reviews of um, games or we actually look at games, we don't just do it off willy-nilly we're in touch with the developers talking with them and they do watch the shows afterwards and they do give us feedback just like we hope you do hint hint <laughs> very very subtle i like it um but no we we are in touch with the developers and uh while They've been very responsive to all of the stuff we said. Um, there was an issue with some of the barrier to entry with the monetary system uh, that we talked about. Um, I have to clarify something about what I said. I said it cost me about five dollars to get a pack. That's not because of the developer themselves. It's the way money transfers work with uh, Australian dollars to euros and the way Australian banks work and stuff. It takes cost me about. Uh, a dollar seventy-five or so to get one of my Australian dollars into a uh, one euro, and then you have to then banks lump on like three dollar transaction charges overseas <laughs> accounts, and then another two dollars for like transferring money from one currency to the next. So that that's what I was getting at for that. The fact that it was in in euros and all this other crap sort of happens to me. Put the, put the buzzer in there. Um, uh, that that was that was me, you know, being annoyed at the way the system works, not not at the not the developers yeah. themselves. Um, we just want to clarify that it is, it's about uh, a euro gets you 
a booster pack, which is fine. Um, but yeah, we, we just need to clarify that because money is a bit of a touchy issue when it comes to um, you know, basically everything, let's be honest. <laughs> Money makes the world go round, it makes Marsh cry, and it makes developers sad. But it makes banks incredibly rich, and that's a topic for another show. Ugh. Yes, so we, we just we just felt like that needed to be clarified. Um, yes. It was asked by the developers that we do clarify that, and we felt that, you know, they're, they're, they're right on to have, to have an issue with that. Um, so that's our problem, that's our fault. Um, we should have been a lot clearer on why. Um, the the reason we, the whole reason we wanted to talk about that was not because of the money issue but because uh, we felt that there should be a way to exchange coins, which is the currency you get for playing games, into ingots or into right. packs directly, not because money sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's all I'm going to say on that topic, otherwise I will go on my soapbox, um, and we haven't constructed it yet. The chewer skulls are still in the corner. They need to be bleached. Fair enough. <laughs> I, I like the grunge effect, but you can bleach them. I want them to be pretty, because otherwise I can't paint them in rainbows of colors. Oh, God. <laughs> That's a reference. That's a reference to, to Blizzard Forecast. Yes, if anyway. you watch the Blizzard Forecast on Wednesday, you will totally catch the reference there. Oh, I'm flying. Right. So this week's pseudo, what are we doing? Well, we are going to be discussing um, what is pretty much our part three. Our next bit of review, preview, and analytical analysis and discussion on things such as constructed and draft play. Or for some people, it is known as I make my own decks versus I have to pick cards. So depending upon just how skilled you are, it is about limited and constructed playability. So what we'll be looking at when it comes to every single TCG or CCG that we actually look at is, is there an option for both or not? If there isn't, we are going to discuss how there could be or why there should be or why there shouldn't be. Because some games, it really wouldn't do well to do draft. Other games, I think, would actually enhance its playability because these are two core concepts when it comes to actually playing a TCG. And then, um, obviously, if there is stuff there, we will kind of go into a little bit of depth about, well, not really a little, we'll probably go into a great deal of depth, about what is good about them, what is bad about them, what is, eh, it's a TCG, you expect that kind of a thing, a.k.a. meh. And maybe, <laughs> maybe, just maybe, we might even get some singing llamas involved. Here's a llama, there's a llama, everywhere a little llama, 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 llama duck. Exactly. I may or may not know that song verbatim. Um, <laughs> What's really anyway. weird is that was so completely unplanned, unscripted, and yet Mars just came out with it. Even though when we went to do a testing pre-show, he's all, I ain't singing. You can't make me I do it. for you. What are you doing? <laughs> Of course, I have I have no morals. This is how this works. Um, yes. Right. So apparently we have a surprise for some of our viewers as well. But yes. before that, we want to we want to restress that uh, battle for for Gia is basically open for business. If well, it's open beta still. It's open beta. Um, yes. But you can get you can get in there. You can start doing stuff. I want to see more UK flags. Um, I want an Australian flag. It makes me sad. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, let, let's get start seeing some more UK flags. Uh, I've been seeing a few more, but you know, I want to see. Let, let's let's start dominating. I want to see top rankings. Level level forty top ranking needs to see a UK flag in there somewhere. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, you guys have now just officially been offered probably one of the biggest challenges by the Doctor Marshmallow. I think I've ever heard. Besides me trying to get into the top high levels and the top ten when it involves Hearthstone. So good luck. Have fun and do get in touch if you actually make it because you know we'll give you something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's I'm not. That's somewhere between creepy and ridiculous sexual in the window. I'm not sure. I have no idea what you're talking about, but well, let's, no, give, no. Let, let's give people the good <laughs> Carrying news. Carrying on. Let's give people some really, really good news. Okay. Because it might inspire them. 
Be inspired. Okay. Me. Uh, Fine. Okay. okay. All right. So here's the deal. I was going to let him try to do it, but obviously Swagzilla needs to step up to the plate because it seems exactly. that some people just can't seem to handle giving away things on shows. And that's something I apparently excel at as Lady Swagzilla, Queen Swagzilla, she who keeps all of the prizes and gives them out in a variety of manners, including something for Battle for Gia. First off, I want to give a huge, huge thank you to the developers of Battle for Gia because they're like, hey, we could totally give you something to give away. Guess what? We are. But you know what the best part about this giveaway is, Marsh? Um, it comes with ponies? Does it come with ponies? No, it does not come with ponies, nor does it come with unicorns. Uh -huh. The best part about this giveaway is nobody needs to do anything except for register for an account on Battle for Gia and input a code. Talk about easy. Don't have to pick a random winner as I knock stuff off my desk because I get excited as Swagzilla. <laughs> so I do apologize about that. But anyway, here's what you got to do. Go to Battle for Gia, which is a very easy thing to do, battleforgia.com. And make certain that in the upper left, you select the country that you are associated with or the language that you would like to have the actual game in. And when you go to the shop page, you can click on acquire ingots. And when you click on acquire ingots, you can apply a code towards the very bottom. And that actual code is MMOBuff hyphen top draw. Cause you know, that's how it works. And this is going to get you 25 free ingots in which you can actually make a purchase of a booster pack for free. And you can get yeah. either chaos, neutral, or order. I highly yeah. recommend chaos personally, but you know, that's just... <laughs> of course you do, because we're all mad here. <laughs> <laughs> we're all just a little bit insane. But yes, take this code, spread it around, get more people playing it, because I would like to get feedback from you all specifically so that we can turn around and ensure that the developers are hearing what is being said, because we're getting closer and closer to that community show. Yes, that, that's going to be an interesting one. Oh, um, it is, most definitely. <laughs> But yes. We have to work on your evil laugh. Um, <laughs> that's, see, that's best. <laughs> Just as a disclaimer, Sido is not evil in any way, shape, or form. In fact, she's responsible for a variety of things, including hearts. <sighs> Though some people have obviously haven't seen your uh, second YouTube channel where the crazy ducks appear. The, these are Sido's. Um, well, they're her pseudos, really. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep anyway, my mouth shut. <laughs> I think I feel I feel as though this is this is enough general trolling for the episode. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, perhaps <laughs> perhaps considering it's been like half an hour, we should probably get into actually not. doing stuff. It yeah, I know. Not. You, you wish it was. If you could spend a half hour trolling me, you totally would. But yes, let's oh, do this. I, I have done. Let's 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 go to constructed versus limited. And as a reminder to people, especially if you're starting out with TCGs and SCGs as well as CCGs, there is a difference between the two. Most people are going to be more familiar with constructive play than anything else. It's where you build your own deck within the confines of whatever the game may be. So for example, if a game says that you can only have 30 cards in your deck, well, obviously that's your confine. You can only put 30 cards in your deck. If a game says you need to have one general to support and roughly six other cards that are supposed to be things that work with your support cards and your general kind of a little bit like the way battle for Shia works then you're going to build a deck with those particular restrictions now that in mind that is so vastly different than construct or sorry than limited slash draft uh, yeah. <laughs> limited slash draft is an incredibly bizarre concept. And what I want to do is I want to get you, Marsh, because this actually originated in Magic, if I remember correctly, because I don't remember it being in any of the TCG ahead of this or any kind of card game ahead of this. Um, that's a good point. I actually don't know. Um, my first experience of uh, Limited was in Magic, but... Yeah, but see, that's just it. I really don't... Uh, that's a bit of a curveball. I don't actually know. Um, I feel as though maybe it might have been, but I wouldn't put money on it. Nothing I'd be willing to lose, at least. 
Um, <laughs> well, if you happen to know folks out there in the beyond, beyond land, tell us in the chat and we shall put it upon there like a lucky leprechaun. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know. So, but so limited. Limited is exactly limited that. Limited slash draft. Well, well, it's not limited slash draft. Draft is is limited. So limit limited That's just it. comes from a limited card pool. That's what you have. So anything that limits the card pool you could possibly have is limited in some form. So arena in Hearthstone is limited. Draft in Magic is limited. Sealed in Magic is limited. That sort of stuff. Um, this is incredibly there's, fun. Mm, there's there's a uh, it's more draft, yeah, it's drafty sort of thing in Soulforge. That's that's a limited format. So all it is, the only thing you really need to qualify for limited is to have a randomized limited card pool in which to select cards from. Um, and there's no real way in which it works, I suppose, really, because so many different games have put in so many different iterations of it. There's no real standardized way to do it. It's all whatever works best with your particular card game. Yeah. Um, that being said, um, we might actually end up talking about Limited a lot in this episode mm. because Battle for Gear lacks a limited currently. format. In the, in, in the, yeah, currently. In the sense of... A limited card pool. There's some interesting challenge rooms um, that yes. throw extra randomness in, but it doesn't. In my mind, it doesn't quite qualify as a limited, limited experience. Now it seems more along the lines of even though you are battling up against other people and there is some random things to go with it. One of the things that it kind of reminds me of is the solo play that happens in a lot of games. So for, or I should say online games are really where you find it more so than an actual face-to-face -face card game. But you've got things like uh, the story quests, things like that. It just, it just strikes me as that more so than actual draft or anything else like that. Because, but yeah, we are going to get into this. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You lost me for a second there. I'm like, oh, what are you talking about? You, you have, you have done the challenges. Yeah, no, well, you could, I, I didn't know whether you were talking about like, the challenges or the campaigns for a second there. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're talking about the campaigns. I uh, might be, actually. Give me one yeah. second. But yes. <laughs> yeah. We are totally prepared. No, you know what it is? It's because of the fact that there is a bunch there. And no, it's not the challenges that I am thinking of. Yeah. It's the so, war rooms. As we oh, pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, as, yeah, yeah we pause. as we pause. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm talking about the war rooms. Um... Yeah, so challenge rooms, war rooms. I've got my terminology mixed up. So was I right, Marsh? Quiet, you. Ah, uh, you may have been. So war, war rooms are what I thought were challenge rooms because they they give you specific challenges. I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. No, nah. challenge room is where you challenge people to duels, for lack of a better explanation. War rooms is where they throw random people at you with random stuff and go have at you. Yes. So it's not quite limited in any way because you're not picking anything except I will play this one. But yes. Okay. Let's do this. Let's go through the stuff that we've got because right. there's a couple things we want to cover and we want to make sure we get them all in. Oh, yeah. There's a list. The list is huge. Um, so we'll start with... Uh, I think the best place to start is probably the benefits between constructed and limited. Mm, okay. Why you play one, why you play the other, and all that sort of sort of jazz jazz hands. Um, yeah. So constructed in my mind, constructed is more about you know explicitly building a deck for a specific purpose, as we've said before. So you have a purpose in mind. How are you going to build this deck? Awesome. This is how I'm going to build it. These are what I want it to get to do. 
yay, stuff happens. Um, and you're restricted by what card you have, but really that's the only restriction in most cases. It's the cards Limited you the own other. is really what it comes down to. It is the cards that you own, however you purchase them or got them. They're in and your binder on your shelf. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Um, so it's the cards you have and you're doing stuff with them. Um, and generally, on, for online games, you do stuff with them, you get whatever the random currency is. In this case, coins. So you play people, you get experience, you get ranks, you get coins. Yes. Awesome. That's what you do constructed for. Limited, on the other hand, there's two ways to do limited, I find, <coughs> generally. Uh, the first way is uh, just, you know, pod drafting or sort of, you know, eight people sort of get on a draft or, you know, you get given a limited set of cards. What are you, what are you giggling at? I, I'm giggling at the way that you're explaining it. I'm just waiting for you to continue. Go on. Okay. Very much about, you know, it is what it says on the tin, gives you a limited set of cards, you have to build the best deck out of those cards, you play other people, and whoever wins, wins. The other way to do it, and I feel this is, this is the way, or this is the reason it attracts lots of people, is the fact that you pay a certain amount of money to get into a draft or a sealed or whatever, and the cards that you open are yours. So it's a way to increase your constructed playability. Yes. And then you build whatever is the best thing, and you have the chance to win prizes. So you're actually, what you're paying for is the cards, but mm -hmm. it's sort of like a different way to open cards. So we call it limited, and we call it like uh, a mode of play, if you will. But for lots of people, it's it's about being able to open more cards and just you know having a you know balls around with them basically having a play around with them in a different format before that they can, they go use it in constructed. <clears throat> so it, it's it's like another process of opening packs and that's how lots of people look at it. Just another way mm. to play or experience cards in different ways. I I will I want to throw out there if um you really want to get to know how to play a TCG play limited yes. because what ends up happening is if you get so used to just playing with the cards that you say own in the decks that you have created uh you kind of find yourself in a rut when it comes to learning curves if you take on limited there are a few things that occur one you learn how to build much better decks because you go well next time i won't take so many waters next time i won't take so many lands you know you can throw out a whole bunch of things and learn from it but in the end you will find yourself going i have to solve the problem that has been put before me and I'm going to have to do it in some kind of creative manner because I got nothing. How the yeah. hell do I survive this? Or how do I win this? And honestly, that comes from being able to play with cards you don't really own, you don't have yet, or have just gotten. So you have to think quicker and out of the box. And it really does make you a much better player. And it can... There can be some really crazy things that come about from it. I mean, we had on the on Top Draws Blizzard Forecast Edition, we had a very special treat for a card of the week because someone had the ability to have multiple of one specific card because they were able to draft it into their deck and put things together to make it all work together. You know, crazy yeah, things really happen. But yeah, and it, it makes you look at cards in a way that you wouldn't have thought of before. So mm. something that might be trash and constructed, all of a sudden it's amazing in this one very specific mm. situation in limited, and you realize that specific situation comes up a very frequently in yes. constructed. Maybe I should consider putting it in. So that's why you find that in general, the deck, the great deck builders are also great limited players, although they may may not be great constructed players in a sense. Anyway, so that, that's I feel as though that's enough of a primer on the difference between cons and benefits on constructed and limited. I, I could go all day um, because I'm a I'm a limited person myself. I love limited. Um, fine, fine. Ah, <laughs> uh, the trolling continues. 
Um, all right, so constructed in Battle for Gear. Pseudo, what is your opinion? Okay, let's start off with some of the very, very basics. Um, if you have no idea how to put together a deck, or you don't know what you're supposed to do because it's so unclear what the cards are really trying to tell you to do, it's a little complicated to put a deck together for constructed. However, it is a little easier because you literally only have a small amount of cards in a deck. And I mean, tiny amount. I'm used to playing with games where you have want to have 30 or 60 cards as a rough average because those are very, very common things. Battle for Gia doesn't do that. And I like that because it does make you think, well, if I can only have a certain amount of cards in my deck, I really need to pick the good ones. Well, what is good? And you have to keep in mind that when it comes to building anything within Battle for Gia, you have to have a general. You pick two support cards of which only one is going to show up in a game and you can't replace it. And then you get, like I said, a couple of support or cards that are used on the actual battlefield itself. Remember, in Battle for Gia, you have five, sorry, four cards, five cards. You have four cards that can actually attack. Now, your general can defend himself, but he's really not going to last if he ends up getting it's whacked. It's not so useful in that. Yeah, Ew, no. that is not <laughs> useful at all. So, when it comes to actually building things in a constructed manner, getting cards is slightly exciting. However, I'm, I'm still... I, this is probably just going to be part of the beta. It's a little rough for me to sit there and go, Hey, that card is great. I'm so glad I got it. Because I'm sitting there going, That card does what? Err... Does it supposed to go with this? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I have um, I've put together uh, several decks now, and I've actually played multiple times in a variety of manners against a variety of people. And uh, it took me a while to actually realize how things worked. And even then, I found myself getting slightly confused. I think, I swear, it's literally just the language thing. I have a feeling that once everything gets fully translated and everything's probably done, I, I'll be able to look at it and go, yeah, boom, yeah, boom, yeah, boom. Because I have a hard yeah. time seeing how someone who only has a certain amount of command points is still able to use more command points than they had. And I'm wondering if that's a bug. I'm not certain, but I think it might be. I have played a couple of games now in Constructed up against other people in the challenge room, because that's where you bring your chat, your particular Constructed decks to, um, where I have seen them spend... 16, 17 command points across the entire game when they started out with 13. And I didn't see it incrementing up, even though I was looking for the support cards that do have the ability to give certain buffs because there are ones that can give you more command points, yeah. ones that can drain morale, um, things like that. And I was looking for, and I didn't see it. And I'm like, okay, maybe that's a bug. But I lost the game and then I won another one and I'm all like, I think I know why I won, but I can't be sure. Hmm. Still a little rough yeah. right there. But the building of the decks is a lot of fun because you have three key factions. And in all honesty, if you want to get the benefits of the army bonus, you need to have... Look, what I like about the Constructed in Battle for Gia is the fact that it's really fast. Even... Yeah, e even if your opponent's being a bleep, um, there's timers, there's only, the rounds are only so long, and you just go, mm, click, and then ignore if your opponent's being a bit of a bleep. Um, next is, you don't really need a whole lot of cards to be able to build a good deck. No, you don't. If got, see, if you've got the strategy behind it, and you know how to use your command points well, and you can figure out sort of like, oh, I can sacrifice this creature, um, put no command points into it, and then this creature has a huge morale damage, so if I imp impetus him for two, I can kill my opponent straight away, that sort of stuff. You can do that, and 
it doesn't really matter whether you're using a deck full of common cards or a deck full of super rare, fantabulous, super phrygistic, expialidocious cards. It doesn't matter. Wow. It's the strategy behind it that that really is the measure of whether you win or lose. And I really like that. It sort of it eliminates a lot of that pay for win aspect that you do get in a lot of card games. Mm-hmm. Although it can be argued that it's still there, but until we see some expansions or some extra cards or something that do, like, there's options for, like, super-duper rare sort of stuff, um, but there's none in the game that I've found, and I've looked at all the cards, I believe. So unless they go down that route of having, like, mega rare and blah, 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 and that they are so overpowered that no matter how much strategy you put into it, I don't feel as though... I feel as though, don't matter how it does not matter English. Um, it doesn't matter how much money you put into it if you don't have the strategy or the understanding. Uh, if you have a thing full of super rares, you're still going to lose. And I like that aspect. Um, See, that's and the I, thing. I, I I hate to cut in on this, but. What people need to understand is one of the core functionalities behind what makes Battle for Gia so fast and so quick is all of those extra little cards, those little minions, those guys who sit on the battlefield randomly show up all over the place. So you could have some horses or cavalry, as we discussed in a previous horsies. episode, show up as a rear creature. You know, you could have all kinds of you could have a character i had a card with flank show up in my rear position and i was like well i guess that kind of defeats the purpose of flank <laughs> although yep. the rear creature can defend against anything or you know attack all the things up in front i mean it's kind of interesting how it all plays out but the actual core functionality is those cards can show up literally anywhere on your board in any order and i love that I absolutely love that. That's just a core functionality of what makes Battle for Gia. Battle for Gia. But anyway, sorry. I just really wanted to throw that in there. Yeah, look, I those are the things I really like about the game. Um what I you know, being the limited player I am, the thing that really gets me about, you know, is is the fact that I don't have an option for limited. Mm. Um <clears throat> to be honest, to be brutally honest. That's a, a sort of, it's a deal breaker for me um, for hmm. pretty much any TCG I play because uh, Constructed is only so entertaining for so long unless you can really vary it up for me. Now, this is just for me. I'm putting it out there. Right? There's lots of people that really love Constructed, but No Limited is a deal breaker for me. Um, doesn't matter how much of a constructed base you have, eventually I'm going to either feel like I've seen everything or feel like I understand how everything works and then I'm going to be bored. Um, <laughs> it might not happen for a long time, but I know it's coming. We'll see. And that's, go on. That's the thing. When it comes to playing a TCG, um, especially something online, I look for three things. I look for a solo story that I can just play against an AI. I look for the ability to do constructed play. And I look for the ability to do the limited play. Because the limited play is where you get to see the cards or use the cards you'd never be able to get your hands on in a million years. You know, those super yeah. ultra, oh my gosh, super califragilistic, expialidocious llama rare cards as the case may be that show up and you're like well hey that actually came up in draft i won't be able to keep it and put it in my collection for use later my my card deck is still going to be you know on the binder on the shelf behind me but it's still going to be fun to give it a go give it a try and those three things i look for because i have various moods just like you do and you who happens to be a tcg whore you need something to keep you entertained and constructed <laughs> oh, won't really do it you, constructed yeah. just won't do it whereas for me there are times where i really don't want to play against somebody else i just want to play the ai so we kind of go to two different extremes just like we do with our experience in tcgs yeah. cheesy smile oh wow <laughs> um but that, that that's a good 
thing that I haven't really covered yet is you know, the casual experience in in Battlefield Gear. Um, I feel as though like a lot of to be honest, a lot of our mm, complaints, issues, whatever you want to call them, concerns, um, do very much revolve around the more competitive side of being able to play card games. Mm. Would you not agree? I, I would have mm. to agree with that. I really, really would. So for you as a person that does you know, play the AI um, or someone who doesn't is necessarily isn't necessarily interested in the competitive aspects of it. Just wants a time waster or something to look at pretty pictures. Not generalizing, um, you know. Just I don't know for whatever reason that you just want to sit down and play the AI or enjoy the casual experience of the game. How does that work for you right now in Battle for Gia? Honestly, it doesn't, and it's not. I don't necessarily think it's it's a fault of the design in any way, shape, or form. I um, I believe that Battle for Gia has got something planned. There's something hidden that just says sort of coming soon when you click on the play button, and I'm really, really curious to see what it is that is coming because for all we know, it could be this gigantic limited play set that just hasn't been released yet because they're testing out all the other features that are currently in play. But when I go to play now, um, I looked around for what I would consider to be quote unquote, the AI story. Um, the tutorial, pretty much is the AI story. Every game you play that is not a tutorial, whether you're in the war room or the challenges is against somebody else. And I'll be perfectly blunt with you when it comes to playing in the war room. I don't do very, very well, but most of the time I kind of ignore the fact that I'm playing somebody else and pretend I'm playing the AI. <laughs> I just happen to fail at it, and that's okay. Um, I don't necessarily feel that this particular game needs to have a real powerful AI. Um, I don't. I mean, I like we discussed in the very first show when we were starting to talk about things like the the tutorials and things like that. You know, the tutorials have a heck of a lot of information in them. If they break it down a little bit more and add just a tiny bit more content, they could cover so much, and people could walk away from the tutorial going, "I get it." Um, but that to me is the only time you really need to have AI for Battle for Gia. There are other TCGs where I'd be like, seriously, you need a much better AI. This is horrid. But because these games are so short, because these games happen so quickly, as long as you pay attention to what you're doing and not just idly click things and then go back to like watching television or something, you can learn the intricacies of the game just through the gameplay itself. You don't need that AI for an extra level of enjoyment for the game. So to me, despite the fact that it doesn't have that quote unquote solar play player experience that some games do, um, like for example, Magic Online does, uh, Magic 2014 does, the, the Magic genre does, uh, Hearthstone has a little bit of solo play, but not really, you know, it doesn't need it. It just does not need it. And I, I honestly, I, I had to just pause and say to the developers, I have to take my hat off to you because to actually build a game where I, as someone who really loves the AI, can sit there and go, I can play this and enjoy it without having a solo player experience is actually a very difficult thing to accomplish. And they've done it. Just Dude, their design I, I has done it. I, I agree. Um, I think a lot of it stems from the community um, aspects of it as well, uh, because there's no communication between your opponent and yourself, other than this is how many points I'm putting into something, or this is where I'm taking that sort of stuff. There's a chat, there's a chat bar, but no one uses it. Um, I have it loaded up, and Sud and I, uh, we exchange very explicit messages um, that generally concern, concern noob or something like that. Um, <laughs> Our messages to each other through the internal mail system of Battle for Gia consist of one word, noob, 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 noob. Oof, oof. Yeah, basically. Um, <laughs> but there, there's a side chat bar, but no one ever uses it. And I feel as though the fact that there's no in-game communication between you and your opponent mm. sort of sets to remove that, yeah. uh, you know, this guy is so much better than me or, you know, I, I feel embarrassed for playing like this, which is a lot of the reason why people do play AIs 
is they feel like they're embarrassed or that, you know, someone will take the piss or yep. uh, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and I, because that's not there, it's not threatening. Yeah. I, I will come right out and say, hells yeah, use God's it, preach on, nice soapbox. Seriously, <laughs> do you want really me to paint it? Box. Wait, wait, wait. Much soapbox, much, wow. Mm -hmm. Much rainbow. We'll find a better way to do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Someday. But, yeah, but, because, because there's, no, there's no threat there between yes. being embarrassed or, you know, looking like you don't know what you're doing. And it's a complicated game. I feel like I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. And being able to play against someone and mm -hmm. just go, you know what, they're just sort of, they're an avatar on the end of another computer, don't matter what they think sort of stuff. Because that's not, yep. because that's there, I don't, you know, there's no intimidation. And that's, that's that's a great thing about their constructed format, I feel, for everyone, including the experienced player. Absolutely. See, there's there's this really difficult line that has to be walked when it comes to anything on an online level with community. And believe me, we will be getting heavily into it because it's like one of my areas of love, joy, and passion. But, you know, when you don't worry that the person on the other end is going to contact you, call you a noob, call you a scrub, or, you know, basically ridicule you for the choices you have made, hey, it takes so much stress off of you. That is probably why I don't need AI in this game at all. Because I don't feel I need to have to go up against the tutorial guy repeatedly till I understand. I've actually done several games now where um, I had a friend of mine play up against me. Sorry, Marsh, it wasn't you. I I'm cheating on you for my TCG playing <laughs> friends. But um, I had them join and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Mad of War I was playing. Although, hi, Mad of War. Um, Tell Mad of War is one of our viewers who is heavily obsessed with TCGs on a level that I think almost surpasses Marsh's obsession with TCGs. Although, I'm not certain that that's a barrier we'll have to cross someday. But um, no, we were playing, and I specifically said, I want you to come play with me because I need to figure out how this game is working and to make certain that I get. This is what this card means. This is what this army bonus means. This is what this particular bonus means. Well, what happens if we have two cards that go up against each other that have the same strategy amount of points, the same amount of damage, and we tie? Who wins? Who wins and how? And I wanted to figure all that out. So I set up a whole bunch of challenges so that we could challenges in the room, which is basically dueling in this game, so that I yeah. could learn. And I love the fact that I could do that. But I also love the fact that afterwards I could go play somebody else and not care what they thought of me. I could be sitting there going, oh, I could have done that better. I could have done that better. I could have done that better. But there is a bad side to it as well. And that's something that we'll get into in much more detail when it comes to the um, community okay. side of things. But yeah, you're yeah. dang on right. I hate being ridiculed. Please don't do it. <laughs> Please don't ridicule me. I, 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 I don't think that helps anybody learn or grow. Yeah, I agree. So. Um, all right, so we're tail, en tail ending soon. Um, yes, we are. What else do we need to cover? Uh, all right, just a few quick things. Um, so as we talked about, we've got the war room stuff, and those, those things are really cool, but I get kind of shitty that I have to be level 10 to do half of them, and I have to be level 20 to do the one I want to do. Um, like, I, I need to get to level 20 now, and it's going to take so long. Oh, um, because I don't know what it is and I want to do it because I don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> you know, there needs to be some kind of tiering in place to keep you coming back to more. Maybe they don't need to come up with draft. Maybe they need to come up with more war rooms and just not tell you what it is. Just not oh, let you know. Because you would, would be just. so infuriating. It would be, but you would keep coming back for more. You know you would. Oh. I know, I'm a horrible person like that. Oh, yes, that um, makes you horrible because you totally feed into really good game design when it comes to keeping I let players. people manipulate me. That's how that works. Pretty um, much, yes. <laughs> what else? Um, I, I want to throw something out at you, by the way. A couple of yes. shows ago, you're like, you know, we should have something along the lines of achievements and things because yep. it helps influence people. I 
have seen achievements from day one of playing. And I went to go check the amount of achievements that are available. And I almost fell out of my chair because I went, whoa. Yeah, it's my light. Holy wozors. I was like, wow, that's a lot. And I'm like, I wonder if I can get it. And I'm all like, maybe I can get a few. <laughs> At least they don't detract from you from your wins when you lose. <laughs> however, <laughs> th however, there should be some fun. It, it depends on if they really want to add a humorish side to the component for the achievements. You know, things like losing 700 games in a row. I'd so win that. Um, you know, it's it, just if they want to add little humorous things oh, to sure. it, that would be brilliant. You know, winning by the yeah, skin look. of your teeth. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. Um, I look. Some of the achievements reward you with extra XP, extra ingots. Some of them give ingots. Some of them give coins. But you know, I I wouldn't mind seeing like, you know, here's a a random card, or uh, here's a card that you can only get. Like, don't matter how powerful it is, but if there's a card that's in there that I can only get from having a hundred thousand wins or something crazy like that, you do people it. People are gonna go after it. You know. Um, so that might be something worth looking into, but that, that's kind of that, that's kind of a little bit of an aside from the constructed versus limited pack playability. That's more about engagement in getting people involved in constructed and in mm -hmm. a lesser extent in limited, giving them goals to to aim for. Mm -hmm. um, that's usually yeah. why AI so, exists in a game, by the way, in TCGs, is to quote unquote give people sort of goals to go after, at least quick, easy visual goals, because. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's that. So it's, so it's about that setting setting goals and getting achievements and yes. you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, what else can we go into? Quickly, you know, we just wanted to, as we said, we never throw out a an issue without offering a solution to anything. Mm -hmm. um, so quickly, we wanted to just look at, you know, uh, a very basic overview about how you can sort of make limited work in this format maybe and you know just very quickly touch on you know we've already touched on actually i should say that why limited is an important aspect to tcgs um but just to reiterate it's gives you chances to build up a collection or to experience new cards or new deck buildings yes. um and strategies and all that sort of stuff and i feel as though the, there's, there is a way that this game could do it and it simply revolves around a, a draft format, kind of, more in the way that Soul Forge does it. Mm. They give you sort of a very varied pack or two to start with, but once you pick what, you know, order, chaos, neutral, whatever sort of domain you want to exist in, then it starts feeding you cards from that domain only. So it doesn't give you useless cards. So a sort of a draft format like that. And these things could be super quick because you don't need... 30 cards. <laughs> so it looks like you would die. She's like, oh, shut no, up. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I was putting my head back and thought, um, because it's given me an idea, but uh, go ahead. <laughs> okay. I'm expressive because... today. I do apologize. Okay. fine. But because of the way the system works, it could be really quick. And you know, it could be a way of getting cards, but because the the card format, like the the card base is quite limited right now, mm -hmm. I feel as though having it as an experience, maybe paying an entry fee in ingots or in coins, I don't think it would matter too much. Oh. And then having a selection of um prizes so make it three rounds if you win all three you get a booster if you win two out of three you get like i don't know half of your money back or something and if you only win one you get like some coins or like a random rare card or something like that you know something along those lines um it just adds another aspect to the game um i'm not a programmer um i'm not a, a person who deals with games i'm an ideas man uh, yeah. That's why in our game jam, I'm just the ideas person and the person that deals with words. Uh, yeah. This might be completely unachievable. However, if you want to add an extra layer to your game, I feel as though having limited is an extremely important part to that. 
Now, see, I completely agree with you that having limited would work very well. In fact, for Battle for Gia, I'm really hoping that that missing room, so to speak, when you click play, is actually some kind of limited playability. Because you need to have that dimension, uh, especially if you're not going to have a straight AI or something like that for people to play up against. Because otherwise, it does get boring and it does get stagnant. Now, what I think would be interesting is sort of a little different. Um, I like the concept that you've come up with, you know, pick your domain. So you say pick order, chaos and neutral. And I would suggest that they let people have the boosters for those particular things, you know, let them pick from like the cards that show up in your first boost or something. I don't know. Don't let them have as much choice and variety as say something like, um, uh, like magic does jazz hands but something like magic does because in reality when you're building decks for things like magic or you're building things for things like hearthstone or stuff like that you have to build huge decks you do yeah. not need to do that in battle Virgia because your deck size is so severely limited and it's one of the things that makes it such an exciting game and i need to stress that because i don't think people understand how you think oh i've got 30 cards how am i going to do this well, try doing it with less than 12, you know? So, you know, granted it's a different play style and all, but give them a booster pack and a quote unquote randomized deck that has some general and support in it and just let them go to town and build a deck with just the few cards that they are given and go, well, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this, I can do that. There you go. I mean, in a methodology and a design standpoint, that is actually one way to do it, is to say the booster pack that would pop up number 5,453, whatever booster pack ID they please to give, if they do IDs for booster packs, you can just give them a booster pack and say, make a deck and try to supplement it with what you know is going to be missing. So if you know they're not going to get a general, try to give them a couple generals to pick from. You know, yeah. if you know they're not going to have two support, let them have a little bit of support in there. If you know they're going to be missing minions, can I make certain some minions show up? It's not that difficult to actually program in. But because of that, you don't need to give people massive booster packs or massive no. sets of cards to pick from. But I love the concept. However, I would be really put out if I wouldn't have the ability to make something like a neutral chaos deck or something like a neutral order deck. I'd love to have that viability. So, chaos order deck, just for the lols. Oh, just for the fun of it, a chaos order deck. Oh yeah, pretty much a good way to get your butt handed to you in this game, if you want to get honest. But yes, so for me, I would love to see that kind of play in there, and I think it is viable with what you're suggesting. I, however, would throw in there. I'd like to have the ability to have the combo decks based on the, the multiple domains. Yeah. Right. Do you want to start wrapping us up then, Sudo? Well, I can definitely wrap people up, um, especially if we have wrapping paper. Boom. I was just uh, thinking that, like, Sudo attacked with, like, wrapping paper, ribbon, and some scissors. Well, all of a sudden, like, <laughs> Gwyn is, like, wrapped up, like, airmail stamps on my front porch. I'm like... What are you doing here? What's going on? I, I was wrapped up. Wrapped. I also do boom chicka 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 boom chicka 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 pyoing 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 pyoing. And that's oh. a very famous rap that pseudo slash wagzilla slash lobzilla has come up with. But anyway, yeah, let's do this. As a reminder to everyone, we do want people to give this game a go and we do want to get your feedback because it is incredibly important to us. Because it's not just us talking, it's everybody else who is playing the game as well. And you do have the ability to acquire ingots and ingots that we will give you will let you get a booster pack for you to play with and do crazy weird things with like beat marsh no nah. because nah. you totally know you're gonna beat me so you know it's it's definitely one of those things that you can try you, you can try but i have a crazy chaos deck right now it's just not gonna happen yeah your deck is really weird your deck is incredibly weird. But yes, we are going to let you use a code, and that code I'm actually going to put right up there. And the code is MMObuff-TopDraw. You apply the code when you go to click Acquire Ingots in the upper right-hand side. Well, sort of 
lower middle right hand. It's right there, basically. Yeah. It, you really can't miss it. Um, and it will actually allow you to get a booster pack because it's 25 ingots. And again, a huge thank you to everybody at Battle for GF for ensuring that we have that. This particular code can only be applied once, once. to your account. However, a lot of people can use it. So get your friends involved. Let them try it out and test it because that's kind of important. It's best to awesome. play at games with friends. It really is. It really is. And then I get stuck with pseudo. <sighs> I know. It sucks for you, doesn't it? And it yet really I does. get all the benefits from the relationship. Isn't it wonderful and grand? Yeah. Just no. like any real relationship. <laughs> oh, oh, have you know that you love me? Hearts. You know uh, you do. No. Anyway, yes, if you would like to play up against Marsh or myself, my ID is pseudo. You can send me a message in game and I will do my best to be around to challenge you if you are interested in playing against me. Marsh, what is yours? Marshmallows. Same way it's spelled in the doobly doop thing. Um, marshmallows. Um, Without the doctor in front of it. He, he's, he's going yeah, yeah. incognito for, for this. Indubitably. Indubitably. Um, yes, if you want to send me a message, that is completely fine. Um, it, chances are, if you're in America, you're probably shit out of luck. Um, or England, for that matter. In fact, unless you're in, like, China or Australia, <laughs> I, I don't like your choices. Uh, but I might be online. You might get lucky. Yeah, the thing is, most of us gamers come on at all different times, so you never know. Not with this you, Marishi. It's entirely possible. But yes, so that's all that. So now, as a reminder, a huge thank you. Next week, we're actually going to be looking at UI and design. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. One. It's going to be an interesting one because it's where I get to step in as a programmer, as a coder, as a developer, as someone who stresses a huge amount of needs for proper UX. It'll be a very interesting conversation because I have a feeling Marsh is going to learn some things. Yeah, I have a feeling my brain is going to explode. It's going to be great. <laughs> and all the years of tutoring people in technology are finally going to show as we go over UX. Um, but we're going to go over the UI and the design and everything. We've touched a little bit on some in previous shows, but this next coming show for next week, we will be going very much so into it. And it might be a slightly technical show. Some people may be more interested in just certain bits and pieces, but I am going to dig as deep as I can get with the time that I am given and still keep you guys informed and give you analysis awesome. and stuff like that. Because that's important. Ooh. I get to play the noob. I get to play the nuke because I have no idea about half the stuff she wants to talk about. <laughs> yes, yes, this is very, very true. Um, but yes, so keep that in mind. Now, here is where I get to go over all the crazy things that are going to be happening on MMO Buff. So please pay attention. Holy cow. Let's start off with Monday. Monday, Mizpa and I are back. We had spent last week spending time discussing of all things... MMOs and the risk of innovation. So we did patches before that. We did, should you go back to a game that you've played before, before that? What could possibly be happening on Monday? Well, let's just say you're going to want to show up because there's, there's some crazy things occurring. Ta-da! Tuesday, we have the campfire. And the campfire this particular week, let's just say the guest is going to totally dictate everything that we talk about. Because that's what's going to happen. Yes. Wednesday, we've got the Blizzard forecast again, which has Marsh and myself along with Trollden and the tro top draw version as we discuss Hearthstone. But it is also Marsh, Parv, Real Blank Space, and Trollden playing Heroes of the Storm, discussing it, as well as Gosh, the rest of the Blizzard forecast. Mizpah? That's what I mean. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah. Go with that one, because that's the real one. Marsh is mine. I don't share Marsh, except very rarely. <laughs> mm. I am she never learned to share. That is so true. <laughs> anyway, um, so yes, that's the Blizzard forecast. And we've got a whole bunch of people on to discuss things. And we do have some new guests 
I should say hosts that will be joining very soon as we go into other topics such as StarCraft and Diablo. But don't forget, they'll also be discussing Warlords of Draenor. There's some crazy things going on in the community right now. And uh, I'm pushing them to talk about apathy. We'll see what ends up happening. I only have so much control and influence here. Nicely done with the phone. And then yeah. on Thursday, we have the data mine where Danny from Pixel, or just a Pixel game development studio, uh, along with myself, get guests on to talk about game development, game design, engines, legal things. We had on our second episode, Dr. Joe Twist on, and holy cow, was she an absolute tw a twist, trip. Because trip. she trip. was a complete and utter trip because she is the CEO of Yuki.info, which is an advocacy group for game developers helping to bring together people so that they get all the stuff that they're supposed to get from the legal standpoint on down. And she was an absolute trip. Absolutely hysterical. She loves cats, in case people don't yeah, get that. that. By mm. the end of the episode, she's absolutely crazy. And then, of course, the last one in episode three, I can't tell you who was our guest, because we have, like, several people trying to get on, and we're trying to figure out a way to balance out everybody. It's like, whoa. Um, but there are several game developers who would like to come on, and we've also had a request to talk a little bit about various programming languages at a particular time, so I do know that we'll be going into that in detail in a show. Friday, we have Cosmotronic, holy cow, where it's all about Wildstar, where it's all about the things that go bump in the night in Nexus, and since the game is out, you're going to want to hang around because our format's changing, and I bet you're curious as to how. And then... On Saturday, Marsh and I are back as we continue our discussion on that which is known as the Battle for Gia. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Good lord, that's a lot of stuff in a week. I haven't even gotten into the fact that we do have another MMO buff perspective coming up. And people wonder what I do with my time. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I'm busy. Right. Well, that's it from us, folks. Would you like to? Okay. Okay. Goodbye, mortals. I will see you next time. And this is Suda saying tittle pit from MM above. And of course, Dr. Marsh Hearts, thank you so much for joining me again. Hearts. It's like that, right? No, no, no. Uh, no. Bye. <laughs> tittle pit. <laughs>